Hey everyone, welcome to Camp in a Box. Today we're going to learn how to color our salt dough from a recipe in an early video, and then we're going to make a coin bowl or a key bowl for your Father's Day. Go ahead and get started by flowering your workspace and grabbing your materials. In order to add color to your dough, you're going to need to use your thumb and make a small well in the middle of your dough ball. Then you can add in your coloring agent. I decided to use some paint here, but you can also use food coloring if you want a really vibrant color. To mix your color throughout the dough, grab the sides and pinch, and then bring those pinched portions of dough into the center. You'll start to notice that the color will bubble up from the creases of your dough, and it gets all over your fingers. Once you've achieved that, you can start rolling the dough between your hands and twisting and folding to make sure that all of that color gets evenly distributed. If you find that the dough is starting to stick to your hands, grab your little bag of extra flour that you keep on hand and cover your hands as well as the top of your dough with a light layer of flour. This will prevent further sticking down the line. Repeat this process until the dough is as vibrant as you would like it to be. Now do keep in mind, if you're using food coloring, that can stain your hands, so you might want to wear gloves. But if you're using a washable paint like I am, you'll be able to wash your hands off no problem. Eventually you might end up with a layer of sticky flour and dough on your hands so much that just adding extra flour isn't going to help. So go wash them off at the sink with some soap and water. Keep in mind that this recipe is really sensitive to heat and humidity. I was working out in a garage where I didn't have a fan or any sort of AC. So my dough was probably a lot stickier than yours will be if you're working inside. You might actually get to finish this project in a shorter time than I did. Next, you're going to want to grab a surface that you can move. I ended up using a clipboard, but you could use something like a paper plate. Go ahead and flour your surface to make sure your dough doesn't stick to it, and then transfer your ball of dough onto your new mobile surface. Flatten your dough out into a circle, roughly about the size of a cereal bowl. Then, once you're sure that your surface can accommodate your new shape, roll your dough back up into a ball and pinch off about a third. You're going to need to use this material to coil up and make the rim of your dish later. Now it's time to make the bottom of your bowl. Go ahead and reflower your work surface and then flatten your dough onto your mobile work surface. Again, you're going to want it to be about the size of a cereal bowl. You're also going to want to make sure the bottom of your bowl is in between half an inch and a quarter of an inch thick. If it's any thinner than that, there's a chance that it could break when you bake it in the oven. Next, you're going to want to grab something that you can use to poke holes. I use this little wooden craft stick. You're going to want to poke shallow holes all around the outside of your circle. Once you're done poking holes, get a little bit of water and wet your fingers. Then run over the holes you just made with plenty of water on your finger. This will help the dough become sticky again so you can add your coil and build up the sides of your bowl. Grab that piece of dough that you pinched off earlier and start rolling it between your hands and your work surface. Make sure you have plenty of flour on both your hands and the work surface before you start. It's easiest to roll out a coil on a work surface like this instead of just between your hands because you can better control the shape and length of the coil. Once you think the coil is long enough, go ahead and start laying it over the holes that you made on your bottom circle piece. Luckily, you'll have a little bit of an overlap that you can pinch together. Keep pinching and gently pressing your coil down onto the bottom piece of your bowl all the way around. And if you find that there are any thin spots in your coil, grab your extra little piece and press it against the original coil. Then use your fingers to smooth the two pieces together and press it into the bottom part of your bowl. 
keep sculpting around the sides of your bowl and making sure that you have no seams between your coil and the bottom of your bowl. Once you're happy with the overall shape of your bowl, it's time to add our shape into the middle. I chose to do a thumbprint heart, so you just create a V with your thumb and then use your fingers to sculpt more of a point at the bottom of the shape and you have a nice and easy heart. Now it's time to bake our little dish. Use the instructions in the instruction sheet for salt dough and let it firm up a little bit so you can place your piece directly on the oven rack. And there we go. Now that our dish is rock solid, we can start decorating. So I have a fine tip Sharpie as well as a normal tip Sharpie. And that's what you'll we'll use to do our lettering. Then you'll also use red paint to fill in the heart in the middle. We'll go ahead and start with that. Even though your piece should be completely dry and rock solid, some of the paint might still seep into little pores in the dough. So feel free to paint a layer, let it dry, and then come back to it later. Now it's time to write our message on our dish. You can put just about anything you want, but try to keep it short because the bottom of your dish is still going to be very bumpy from the salt dough texture. So the fewer words you have and the fewer letters, the more you're able to control how it looks so it turns out a little bit better. One step that a lot of people forget is actually to put the date on the back of your creations like this. Things that are usually kept as a keepsake. So I just put 2020 on the back of mine so I know when I made it and when I gifted it. I went back over the letters in my phrase with the thicker side of my Sharpie to help the letters pop a little bit more. I was afraid to go back in with the thin side of my Sharpie because the line was just so fine that it caught every single little bump in the dough or even little grains of salt. So keep this in mind if you want to darken your letters. Now that your paint has had some time to dry, go ahead and go back over any patchy areas with a fresh layer of paint. You might notice as you're painting that your heart shape actually has walls. This was dough that was pressed aside and up when we pressed our thumbs into the bowl to make our heart shape. You're more than welcome to paint these if you'd like. Once that last layer of paint is dried, you're all done. Let the paint dry and then wrap it up in a little gift wrap and give it to whoever you'd like for Father's Day. Thanks for crafting with me today, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, have a great day. Bye-bye.